Who's Scott in the, in the control room? Welcome to Independent Lifestyles, sponsored by the Sheboygan County Aging and Disability Resource Center. We present programs that promote independent lifestyles and that direct you to the resources that will help you maintain your health and independence in our community. I'm Christine Jeske, and I'm an outreach worker at the Aging and Disability Resource Center, and I will be your host today. Today's show is about the Pink Heels and the Patient Assistance Program of Aurora. I'm excited to have two very special guests, Shelly Nigro Struvi and Stephanie Struvi as well. Welcome, ladies. Hi, Chris. Thanks Hi. for having us. Thanks how's for having how's us. it going? It's fantastic. How are you? Good, 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 good. good. So, Shelly, could you tell us a little bit about Pink Heels and I just found out this morning that this is a volunteer thing you do. Correct. So this is all on your own time. Yep, we don't get paid for any of it. Um, Pink Heels, we are a nonprofit organization in Sheboygan County, and we offer emotional and financial support to families dealing with the disease that disrupts the family structure. And our main focus is cancer, all cancers. Um, you kind of people see the pink fire trucks driving around and think right away breast cancer. No, it's all cancers for men, women, and children. And we promote our presence by the pink fire trucks um, around town, and we um, do local community events. Um, currently, there are 66 chapters of pink heels and more than 200 refurbished um, pink vehicles. So now, when you say 66 chapters, you're talking through the United States. Correct. Uh huh and um, overseas. And overseas. Correct, yes. So you talked about refurbished pink vehicles. What types of vehicles are being refurbished? Um, fire trucks, uh, pl uh, police cars, ambulances, and motorcycles. Really? Yes. So then do you spray them all pink and stuff? Yes, they do. They, um, you, usually a lot of people donate their time, and they'll donate the paint jobs for them, which is oh, wonderful. Nice. Yep, and most of them are um, retired vehicles. None of the fire trucks actually work anymore, but they run on the road, but you can't use them to go um, snuff out fires or anything mm -hmm. like that. So they're um, donated. Correct. Mm -hmm. They're donated, yes, and they no longer can use them. And you guys get them? Yes, we do. And when you say you no longer use them, they no longer can use them, does that mean like... They're they, still workable. They're still workable that we can drive them to events if we're in a parade or we do a home visit or we do a school visit, but you're not going to see them at an act of fire right. or at a police right. a call or anything like how that. Nice. And how many of those vehicles do you have? You have roughly about 200 total. In our community? No, not in our community, no. Across, Across the United States. Through the 66 chapters. Correct. Okay. We um, currently in Sheboygan, um, we have one pink fire truck. Neat. And how many pink heels are in the state? The state, we have three of them. Oh. Manitowoc, Lake County, and then Sheboygan County. Neat. Yeah. Neat. And um, how does pink heels impact families in our community? We make social visits to brighten spirits, and we fundraise to help those dealing with the financial distress. Um, pink heels focuses on um, returning all funds raised in the community back to the community that raised it. You know, we make home visits, we visit schools, um, we go to workplaces, um, we visit people, and um, just show our love and support. So when you say you show your love and support for these families, this doesn't necessarily mean you're coming and bringing them a check or you're coming to give them something. You could just let them know that you're available. And I understand when you and I spoke, you talked about a team of people that comes in this refurbished pink fire truck. Could you give us a little Correct. scenario about that? We just did a school visit and um, there's two children at a school. We come, um, uh, firehouse number one brought their fire truck. They let us in. We had the pink fire truck behind and we went into the school parking lot and all the kids were out there and we all line up and we show our love and support by giving the child or the adult a big hug and three little words, I love you. Um, we give the, the kids a nice teddy bear. Um, we give the family a carnation or a pink rose in a, in a vase. Um, we also give them our paperwork to let them know how they can get a financial request. But it's all about showing our love and support that we're there for them. Three little words and a hug, I love you, it means it goes so far. I don't think we do enough of that nowadays. Well, we don't, and we no. need more of it. Yes, we do. Yes, we, we do. do. 
And the response from the families when you come? Oh my gosh, tears flowing. Everyone, everyone's got the, the crying, you know. It doesn't take much for me to cry. I, I'm, I'm crying in the fire truck as we're getting there, for Pete's sakes. But it's just, it's just showing that, that someone out there else cares, that we are there for them. Whatever they need, we are there. So having them come, having you go there, you let them know, and then at some point, can they call you? Absolutely. So you want them to know that we're here to support you. Right, and that's in our paperwork that we hand out. Um, it's got our phone numbers on it, um, how they can get financial support, how they mm -hmm. can um, get some bills paid if they need it. We also give our pamphlets out and let them know where we have email, we have um, Facebook. Okay. And how do you raise money to help support your mission? Um, by selling our Pink Heels merchandise, such as t-shirts, sweatshirts, can koozies, water bottles, and other various items in the community um, promoting our organization. So now you spoke to us about you promote on Facebook. Correct. Email. We have a website. But the biggest um, promoter is word of mouth. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. Yes. How people have seen us or they look at us. I, went, I, I wear my t-shirt um, at school sometimes. They're like, you're the lady with the pink fire truck, right? I said, yes, I am. And they all want to know more about it, you know. So they equate that. Like, I, I remember you. Yep, yep, that would be me. So our Facebook page is wonderful. If people would like to go on our Facebook page, like us, and they'll really see what we do, the visits that we do, the home visits, the school visits, and then go on the national page. Um, it would be um, Pink Heels National Tour, and you'll see them touring the United States and talking about the love and support and what we actually do, and the home visits, the school visits, visiting people at their workplace, and just seeing all the firefighters and the volunteers walking in, giving that person a big hug and three words, I love you. It's just amazing. And I, I can imagine sometimes that's very overwhelming for yes, people it, because a lot of people don't show emotion. I mean, Correct. it's easy for me to hug anybody. Correct. You know, and tell everybody, you know, tell my friends I love them. Or, but a lot of people are real kind of standoffish. Good. And how does that affect? I mean, by the time you're done with them, do you mm -hmm. think they're more comfortable? Absolutely. I think they really see that we are genuine and that we mean that, you know. When they see us all lined up and they're in their pink turnout gear, and then we have the firefighters from the um, stations or EMS, and they're standing in line. And it touches them, too, to really see. It's like, wow, look at the impact you made on that person. And that person, when you're coming down the street and those fire engine lights are, are going and the horns are going and you're beeping, it's just amazing. Here we I get come. chills. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Very rewarding. It's very rewarding. Yeah. And um, Stephanie... Can you tell us a little, about, a little bit about mm. your role? <laughs> yes. Um, again, my name is Stephanie, and thanks mm. for having me on today, Chris. I am actually a social worker with Aurora Healthcare. Um, I've worked as a social worker for about the last 15 years, all with Aurora. Specifically, the last 12 years, I've worked in a department called Patient Assistance. Very interesting. And um, I got to be part of a patient assistant program when I got to they wanted me to come into their family and see how it all went. And I was actually so impressed on how that was all handled. So with that said, can you tell us a little bit more about that patient assistant? Sure, patient assistance mm -hmm. is really just a small department within Aurora. It's made up of myself and a registered nurse, Sue Fryer. And what we try to do is work with Aurora patients to navigate their community resources to help them address concerns they may be having. A lot of times we're working with patients who are struggling with chronic medical conditions or are experiencing acute distress. Mm -hmm. And the team of people, like when they meet for the first time, you have a doctor there, you have a social worker there. Can you tell us more? So that, that can be part of our family conference program that's offered through the Vince Lombardi Clinic. Um, we often identify patients who may be struggling um, with their cancer diagnosis or could benefit from a team approach to help them meet their needs. So frequently our family conferences consist of our medical oncologist, uh, a registered nurse navigator, and then myself. Um, oftentimes they'll pull in an occupational therapist too to help address uh, home safety or management concerns. Now you've been with Aurora for 15 years? Yes, 15 mm -hmm. years. 
So you've seen a lot. I have, correct? and I've, I've met a lot of great patients and families. Um, it's always interesting to sit down and hear people's stories, um, their concerns, their fears. You know, I learn right along with them. Um, I can never fully understand what they're going through until you're in that situation. Um, but certainly trying to help them access even the smallest bit of assistance, it, it warms your heart. I think the team approach is awesome when you meet with everybody and their family because I think that that gives that daughter or um, spouse permission to say, this is what's bothering me, how can we, how can we help? I mean, that has to be very beneficial for everybody. Am I correct? Oh, absolutely. And it, it helps to increase the lines of communication between the healthcare team um, with the family and even among the family themselves because the patient may be experiencing something that they didn't feel comfortable talking about with their family. Um, and that provides the opportunity um, in a safe space to, to discuss their concerns. So what do you navigate the people the families with. So can you tell us a little bit about the navigation part of it? Well, what we try to do is sit down and complete a thorough assessment with each patient. And we want to know about their health conditions, how they're coping with those conditions, um, if they're experiencing financial or practical concerns. And what we try to do then is identify what's available right here in our community that can help them address those concerns and alleviate the distress that they might be having. Mm -hmm. You know, oftentimes, again, it, it uh, introduces me to new services that have come about in the community and that I wasn't even aware of. Mm -hmm. And of course, helps me network with people from all different types of agencies. Right, mm -hmm. right. And you two have an interesting history together, right? We, oh, we have we an do. interesting history. <laughs> <laughs> Not only are you, you work together in the community, you're also related, correct? We correct. are. We are cousin-in-laws, actually. Nice. Yes. So um, that was pretty instrumental. That uh, personal yeah. relationship was pretty instrumental in educating me about Pink Heels when it correct. started in Sheboygan County, I think it was a couple years ago already. Two and a half. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I became involved with Pink Heels after my husband passed of cancer two and a half years ago. Then I found out about the organization. And um, my husband's name is on, the, is on the truck. It bears his name. That's the first time I found out about that, that the county had this program going on to help people mm -hmm. with, with financial support and emotional support. And then with Stephanie's role, it kind of went hand in hand. And she's like, oh, dealing with, with patients from Aurora. And it just evolved from there. Well, and it helps that you guys know each other. You ladies know each other. It, it does. Yeah. It probably made me more aware of Pink Heels much right. sooner than I might have otherwise stumbled upon it by myself. Right. You know, certainly right. you try to keep your educa yourself educated <laughs> mm -hmm. about what is available in our community. Um, but because of the personal or side relationship, becoming aware of it much sooner certainly helped to educate me and pass that on to the Aurora patients that we work with. Right. So it's a win-win. Yeah. So if you are stuck at something, you can then call Shelly, and if Shelly needs something, she can then call you. That's correct. And that's if Chris correct. Jeske needs something, she can then call you guys. <laughs> yes, and that's absolutely. Because we all work together. Yeah, that, I mean, yes. really. That's the best part of the, the job, is trying to educate individuals about the different services that are, that are available to them. And it, it connects us with people from the Sheboygan County yeah. Health and Human Services, Aging and Disability Resource Center, you know, outside agencies yep. like Pink Heels. And there's so many people still don't know about, you know, about us. And we are fairly new. It's been around for 10 years. Um, Dave Grable started it in Arizona. He's a retired um, firefighter and he started this program. And um, our president of the chapter, Tara um, Albright, uh, wanted to make a difference. Her husband, is John, is a firefighter for um, Sheboygan Falls Fire Department. Mm -hmm. and, she went, and she heard about, that, about this organization and wanted to bring it here. And Manitowoc had theirs already started, so she wanted to start a chapter in Sheboygan County. And then they had to go about trying to find a, a fire truck in um, Highland, Illinois, was, give, was um, retiring a fire truck. So that's how we got our fire truck. Someone donated the paint job. So it all kind of evolved around. And, and that was, the, I, we never heard about it. Before. I, I never heard about Pink Heels either. And then some of it, they were on Facebook and they were trying to name the truck. 
So Ty had already passed, my husband had already passed, and everyone, all his friends were, let's, let's name the truck Ty. So they were putting his name in, other people were putting in this other lady's name, Dawn, in. And all of a sudden, they came back and said, we're going to name it Dawn Ty. Wonderful. So, they, so Pink Heels got a hold of me and said, we'd like you to like, christen the truck, write his name on there. And um, so I had to you know, in, investigate a little bit more about this and find out more about you know, the truck and this organization. And basically, they figured, okay, she's going to come, sign his name, be done, never come back again. Hmm. I fooled them. <laughs> But did you plan that? Probably not. No, I, I just, I know, I didn't know what I think about it. The more I found out, about it, I'm like, wow. And they had just started about a year before that, and they had just gotten their truck when they named it, and um, so it was just, it was just kind of neat. And I thought, well, maybe I'd better stick around for a while. And I became a volunteer, and then I became the treasurer of it. So, so you work with families that struggle. Correct. Stephanie, you do too, right? You have people that can't afford their medications or can't afford gas in their car. Or right, sometimes it seems like yeah. the insignificant things or uh, maybe things you wouldn't think of, how are they going to um, get to their medical appointment because they don't have the funds to cover the gasoline. Um, or maybe they're struggling because they have reduced earnings because medical appointments are frequently pulling them away from work. You know, certainly at that point, we'd want to educate them about all of their options for programs in the community that could help alleviate that distress. Because we want to focus on them getting well, you know, and, and help them cope with their, their medical conditions. And it's the little things that can become big things that make people sicker, too, it, also. Right. Stress, stress can, oh, can certainly harm you, you know, physically lot. and emotionally. Yeah. So, even sometimes those things that may seem insignificant to us, it means the, the world to a patient. It can totally right. flip the trajectory of right. how things are going to go for them. And I spoke to you many times yes. in my job too. And um, this last time when we spoke, we had an in, um, in common client, client and you talked about pink heels. Mm -hmm. So that's how I got to meet Shelly right. through pink heels. And I didn't even know that existed. Correct. With that said, that's a wonderful resource for everybody. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We're very lucky to have them. Right. We had a lady um, that Stephanie had referred to us, and her main focus was getting her electric bill paid. That weared on her so much. You could tell that it stressed her out. Mm -hmm. And stress in dealing with cancer is not a good thing. Makes it worse. You don't need that. Right. And mm -hmm. we right. paid that for her. You know, it just, she was so elated, so happy. That just took the stress out of, you know, mm -hmm. from her. I think that when we do the jobs that we all do, you have to have a passion for it or you can't do your job mm -hmm. as well. And I know, Shelly, you spoke about your husband, Ty. Mm -hmm. So could you um, tell us a little bit more about Ty? How, I know you, you said they christened the, the truck in his name, but how did it all begin with your journey and your husband? Um, my journey. You know, he was he was ill, and we just did not. When when he got sick, you know, um, we never thought it would be cancer. You know, you never think it was going to that was going to be something like that. And then when we found out that it was cancer, we figured like you normally do, it's going to be treatable. Mm -hmm. And um, and we needed the help too. We came to Stephanie. Stephanie helped us. You know, going through our journey of um, basically, you know, where can we get some help with everything? And she did a wonderful job. <laughs> well, they were brothers. They're cousins. 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 Yeah. Yes, yep. cousins. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, but having a truck named after your husband, how rewarding is that? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, it was, um, and you know, when that came about, and you're, it's on Facebook, and people are throwing names around, and you're thinking, yeah, all right, that's not going to get there, you know. They need to name the truck. Okay, are they going to put his name on there? And then um, Dawn, at the time, was um, a survivor. I mean, she was battling at the time. And um, so they called it Dawn Ty, and I got to meet her. And she was just a lovely little thing. I mean, she went on, she went, whenever we went, she went. She helped as much as she could. She was battling the whole time, and then she passed away last year. So it's just remarkable, I mean, uh, how we all came together. And she was just a, a sweet, sweet gal. And we all need each other to come and that's together. It. Absolutely, absolutely. Right, mm -hmm. right. Um, 
I, what I would like you to do is share a, like a good story about, you know, whether you were working with Stephanie in the story, because I know Aurora does a lot of wonderful things too with, through their patient assistance program. But can, is there that story that sticks in your mind that you could share with us? Because we do have a little time. Okay. Um, we were actually, we were just at a local school in Sheboygan. Uh, we've been a, a couple lately. And um, we brought in the fire trucks and an ambulance. And we, we came in and they were all waiting outside for us. And the biggest thing for him was to ride in the fire truck. Oh my gosh. He actually was in the seat. Was and this, they, now that when you say him, was this somebody that was dealing with? A, yes, he was a first grader. Okay. He was dealing with cancer. That's why you came to the school? Correct. Okay, so yes. somebody must have called you guys, you, you guys to, I hate that you guys. Yeah, I, <laughs> that's okay. You're, you know. Yes, um, the school did. And we had to make sure it was okay with the family and everybody else. And yeah, we just, we showed our love and support for them. When we came in, they're all standing out there waiting for us. And the big, all he wanted to do was ride in the fire truck. So we put him in someone's lap and he rode around in the parking lot. And the, the light on his face, he just lit up that smile. Oh my gosh, it was just wonderful. And he got that teddy bear and he would not let go of that teddy bear. And we were probably there for a good 20 minutes. We all got our picture in front of the fire truck. And I think what impacts, when we have the local fire, fire stations bring us into the, wherever we're going to a home or to a school, it impacts them too because they really realize wh what we're doing. I mean, you're giving that family and that person a hug, if it's not the child or the adult, and we're giving them a hug in those three little words, I love you, that support, and let them know that we're there. Well, and I think it's important because, you know, firemen are always people that save everybody, Correct. which is true, but so are policemen. But I think nowadays some of that has changed a little bit. So it's good for the people to see our police being involved and being who they are, actually. They're just as helpful and yep. caring as our fire department. In a positive way. In a positive way. Absolutely. And right. I think it just is an impact for them. I think people don't really realize until you do one of these visits what it means to these people and what we actually do. Well, and they're human. Correct. Our firemen yep. and our policemen. I mean, they, that must feel good for them inside their hearts, too. I think do something good. That people think we're just there for the um, financial, but we're there for the emotional support. And that's the most important. Yep. That's how I feel. And Stephanie, mm -hmm. do you have anything to share with us about, you know, a really good story or? Oh, I've got lots of good stories. Yeah. <laughs> um, but can we air any of those? <laughs> <laughs> you know, certainly we've uh, referred people over to the Pink Heels organization. Um, Certainly there's a story of a young cancer patient um, who was being treated for breast cancer who really needed to be uplifted, um, you know, emotionally and financially. And I think um, emotionally specifically, just having the Pink Heels program be able to go and see her and mm -hmm. her family um, and like you said, give them a hug and say that they, they were loved. That made all of the difference in the world. You know, it's, again, it may seem insignificant to some people, but um, that can change the whole course for that patient. It puts a face to it. It's not like we're just handing them a check. And it provides the patient with a sense of community that I am yep. loved, right. I am yep. cared about. And it almost makes it seem like, well, mm -hmm. then it's okay if I have breast cancer and I'm sick. Right. I'm mm -hmm. still going to get through it. It's not going to change my diagnosis, but there's others involved. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it, it provides a little bit of a break from, you know, worrying with all of the other issues mm -hmm. related to their mm -hmm. diagnosis. So, mm -hmm. you know, certainly in, in my role, I want to find programs such as that and people um, with organizations that can help a person through that process. Because we all need a helping hand. Yes, we do. So, and it's good to know it's about emotions. The funding is awesome, but really if you can tackle the emotion and be involved and make them feel part of it, mm -hmm. is really awesome. Mm -hmm. Three little words and a hug. I love you yeah. and a hug. 
Three little words and a hug, yeah. right? Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Should put that on a t-shirt. I think so. There's yeah. not enough of that out there nowadays, you know. It's and so they, and, bad. And a lot of them, too, a lot, you know, a lot of the people we talk to, they need other than family just to vent to. And well, we're there for that. Right. Because I think, it, I think that <laughs> um, when I went to this particular family meeting, you could open up and they felt safe there. And then... Yeah. Maybe the spouse or the child isn't going to take offense to what so and so is saying because mm -hmm. it's all part of that. Yep. Mm -hmm. And they need to talk to somebody else or you know their family members. Not that they're getting sick of listening to them, but they get sick of maybe venting to them. And then we're somebody else that they can talk to. That you know, like for me, people ask me, "Why do you do this?" Because I've been I've been down that road. My husband passed from this. So you, you know, can explain. And this is my way of giving back. If I can give, put a smile on just one person's face by three little words and a hug, it's just that makes your day. It's amazing. It really mm -hmm. is. Yep. Yeah, and I can see it in your eyes when you talk. Because <laughs> I'm gonna cry. <laughs> Stephanie, too. I can see it in your eyes as well. Yeah, and I think it's just important to build up a, a good care team, you know, um, from the medical yeah. standpoint, from Absolutely. the community mm -hmm. organization mm -hmm. standpoint, and certainly with your, your family, your friends, your loved ones. Well, yep. and you know, that person that they're venting to, whether it be mm. their spouse, their, their spouse is having problems dealing with what they're going through. Exactly. Right, everybody brings exactly. something unique to the right. situation. Yep. Absolutely. Right. So, um, you know, certainly we want it to be patient-centered, but that includes yes. all of the supporting cast members yes. as well. It's good. It's a good thing. Yes, it is. Is there anything you'd like to add? We have like two minutes left. Hmm. I would just like to share out people to go to our Facebook page, like us. We're always looking for volunteers to help out. And it's Pink Heels? It's Pink Heels. Uh -huh. uh -huh. And we're on Facebook. And look at the national tour. Go to the national tour page, Pink Heels National Tour. And if you want something very touching, you know, look at what they've actually done and how we're trying to offer the support and the love and what they actually do. You'll hear more about Dave Grable, how he started this 10 years ago, his passion for this mission. Now, it's did wonderful. He did he have somebody close to him that passed? No, he did not. He just wanted Amazing. to start something. Amazing. He's a retired firefighter, and it is. So if you go to our Facebook page like us, um, we have meetings once a month, you know, always looking for volunteers to help. And when do you meet once a month? Um, the last Thursday of the month. And where do you meet? Usually Odyssey Lanes at 630, but we can, you know, message us on Facebook. If something changes, we'll, you know, let you, let you know. And how but, many people do you have that come to these meetings? Uh, right now we're probably roughly about 12 to 15 nice. volunteers. That includes the officers and the board members. Nice. They're always looking for more people to help just to give a little bit more love and support. So mm -hmm. again, could you just say it one more time? You meet at Odyssey Lanes. It's the fourth, fourth Thursday. Thursday from 6.30 to? It's usually about an hour, hour and a half uh -huh. at the most. Uh -huh. Yes. Does Stephanie go? <laughs> no, Stephanie does not <laughs> go. <laughs> You're busy with your family. Yeah, sure. Yeah. 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 Well, well yep. good. I, I do appreciate having them as an option good. for our patients. Yeah. Well, I would like to thank Shelly and Stephanie for joining us today and informing us about Pink Heels. To our audience, thank you for turning into an independent uh, lifestyle. Please join us next month. For another interesting topic on maintaining your health and independence, Independent Lifestyles is sponsored by Sheboygan County Aging and Disability Resource Center and is shown on Spectrum Channel 990, UVerse Channel 99, and UWSCSSheboygan.com on Mondays at 2.30 p.m., Wednesdays at 7 p.m., and Thursdays at 9.30 a.m. See you next month. <laughs>